Mycobacterium avium intracellulari infection, Wikipedia article audio. Mycobacterium avium intracellulari infection is an atypical mycobacterial infection, i.e. one with non-tuberculous mycobacteria or NTM, caused by Mycobacterium avium complex, which is made of three mycobacteria species, M. avium, M. intracellulari, and M. chimera. This infection causes respiratory illness in birds, pigs, and humans, especially in immunocompromised people. In the later stages of AIDS it can be very severe. It usually first presents as a persistent cough. It is typically treated with a series of three antibiotics for a period of at least six months. Signs and Symptoms Children Cause Bacteria Risk Factors Pathophysiology Diagnosis HIV Infection Prevention Treatment HIV-infected children Society and Culture Terminology Literary Reference M. avium, M. intracellulari, and M. chimera are each saprotrophic organisms present in soil and water, entry into hosts is usually via the gastrointestinal tract, but also can be via the lungs. MAC infections can cause fevers, diarrhea, malabsorption, as well as loss of appetite and weight loss, and can disseminate to the bone marrow. Therapy for MI is typically resistant to standard mycobacterial therapies. Symptoms are similar to tuberculosis, and include fever, fatigue, and weight loss. Pulmonary involvement is similar to TB, while diarrhea and abdominal pain are associated with gastrointestinal involvement. M. avium and M. hemophilum infections in children form a distinct clinical entity, not associated with abnormalities of the immune system. M. avium typically causes unilateral swelling of one of the lymph nodes of the neck. This node is firm at the beginning but a collar stud abscess is formed eventually, which is a characteristic blue-purple in color with multiple discharging sinuses. The treatment of choice is surgical excision of the affected lymph nodes, with antibiotic treatment reserved for those patients who cannot have surgery. MAC bacteria are common in the environment and cause infection when inhaled or swallowed. Recently, M. avium has been found to deposit and grow in bathroom shower heads from which it may be easily aerosolized and inhaled. Mycobacterium avium complex, also called Mycobacterium avium intracellulari complex, is a microbial complex of three Mycobacterium species that causes Mycobacterium avium intracellulari infection. Some sources also include Mycobacterium avium subspecies paratuberculosis. My is common in immunocompromised individuals, including senior citizens and those with HIV-AIDS or cystic fibrosis. Bronchiectasis, the bronchial condition which causes unnatural enlargement of the bronchial tubes, is commonly found with my infection. Whether the bronchiectasis leads to the MAC infection or is the result of it is not always known. The Mycobacterium avium complex includes common atypical bacteria, i.e. non-tuberculous mycobacteria, found in the environment which can infect people with HIV and low CD4 cell count, mode of infection is usually inhalation or ingestion. MAC causes disseminated disease in up to 40% of people with human immunodeficiency virus in the United States, producing fever, sweats, weight loss, and anemia. 
disseminated MAC characteristically affects people with advanced HIV disease and peripheral CD4 plus T lymphocyte counts less than 100 cells slash all. Effective prevention and therapy of MAC has the potential to contribute substantially to improved quality of life and duration of survival for HIV-infected persons. Mycobacterium avium complex is the most commonly found form of non-tuberculous mycobacteria. Immunodeficiency is not a requirement for my. Mycobacterium avium complex usually affects patients with abnormal lungs or bronchi. However, Candace Baker, Jerome Reich and Richard Johnson describe a series of six patients with MAC infection of the right middle lobe or left lingula who did not have any predisposing lung disorders. The right middle lobe and left lingula of the lungs are served by bronchi that are oriented downward when a person is in the upright position. As a result, these areas of the lung may be more dependent upon vigorous voluntary expectoration for clearance of bacteria and secretions. Since the six patients in their retrospective case series were older females, Reich and Johnson and Baker proposed that patients without a vigorous cough may develop right middle lobe or left lingular infection with MAC. They proposed this syndrome be named Lady Windermere syndrome, after the character Lady Windermere in Oscar Wilde's play Lady Windermere's fan. However, Little research has confirmed this speculative cause. Diagnosis can be achieved through blood cultures, or cultures of other bodily fluids such as sputum. Bone marrow culture can often yield an earlier diagnosis, but is usually avoided as an initial diagnostic step because of its invasiveness. Many people will have anemia and neutropenia if bone marrow is involved. MAC bacteria should always be considered in a person with HIV infection presenting with diarrhea. The diagnosis requires consistent symptoms with two additional signs. Disseminated MAC is most readily diagnosed by one positive blood culture. Blood cultures should be performed in patients with symptoms, signs, or laboratory abnormalities compatible with mycobacterium infection. Blood cultures are not routinely recommended for asymptomatic persons, even for those who have CD4 plus T lymphocyte counts less than 100 cells slash all. MAC in patients with HIV disease is theorized to represent recent acquisition rather than latent infection reactivating. The risk of MAC is inversely related to the patient's CD4 count and increases significantly when the CD4 count decreases below 50 cells slash mm superscript 3. Other risk factors for acquisition of MAC infection include using an indoor swimming pool, consumption of raw or partially cooked fish or shellfish, bronchoscopy, and treatment with granulocyte stimulating factor. Disseminated disease was previously the common presentation prior to the advent of highly active antiretroviral therapy. Today, in regions where heart is the standard of care, localized disease presentation is more likely. This generally includes a focal lymphadenopathy slash lymphadenitis. People with AIDS are given macrolid antibiotics such as azithromycin for prophylactic treatment. People with HIV infection and less than 50 CD4 plus T lymphocytes slash L should be administered prophylaxis against MAC. Prophylaxis should be continued for the patient's lifetime unless multiple drug therapy for MAC becomes necessary because of the development of MAC disease. Clinicians must weigh the potential benefits of MAC prophylaxis against the potential for toxicities and drug interactions, the cost, the potential to produce resistance in a community with a high rate of tuberculosis, and the possibility that the addition of another drug to the medical regimen may adversely affect patients' compliance with treatment. Because of these concerns, therefore, 
in some situations rifabutene prophylaxis should not be administered. Before prophylaxis is administered, patients should be assessed to ensure that they do not have active disease due to MAC, M. tuberculosis, or any other mycobacterial species. This assessment may include a chest radiograph and tuberculin skin test. Rifabutene, by mouth daily, is recommended for the people's lifetime unless disseminated MAC develops, which would then require multiple drug therapy. Although other drugs, such as azithromycin and clarithromycin, have laboratory and clinical activity against MAC, none has been shown in a prospective, controlled trial to be effective and safe for prophylaxis. Thus, in the absence of data, no other regimen can be recommended at this time. The 300 mg dose of rifabutene has been well tolerated. Adverse effects included neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, rash, and gastrointestinal disturbances. Post infection treatment involves a combination of anti tuberculosis antibiotics, including rifampicin, rifabutene, ciprofloxacin, amikacin, ethambutol, streptomycin, clarithromycin, or azithromycin. NTM infections are usually treated with a three drug regimen of either clarithromycin or azithromycin, plus rifampicin and ethambutol. Treatment typically lasts at least 12 months. Although studies have not yet identified an optimal regimen or confirmed that any therapeutic regimen produces sustained clinical benefit for patients with disseminated MAC, the task force concluded that the available information indicated the need for treatment of disseminated MAC. The Public Health Service therefore recommends that regimens be based on the following principles. Chest X-ray or CT scan showing evidence of right middle lobe lung infection, sputum culture or bronchoalveolar lavage culture demonstrating the infection is caused by MAC. Treatment regimens outside a clinical trial should include at least two agents, every regimen should contain either azithromycin or clarithromycin, many experts prefer ethambutol as a second drug. Many clinicians have added one or more of the following as second, third, or fourth agents, clofazamine, rifabutene, rifampin, ciprofloxacin, and in some situations amikacin. Isoniazid and pyrazinamide are not effective for the therapy of MAC. Therapy should continue for the lifetime of the patient if clinical and microbiologic improvement is observed. Clinical manifestations of disseminated MAC such as fever, weight loss, and night sweats should be monitored several times during the initial weeks of therapy. Microbiologic response, as assessed by blood culture every four weeks during initial therapy, can also be helpful in interpreting the efficacy of a therapeutic regimen. Most patients who ultimately respond show substantial clinical improvement in the first four six weeks of therapy. Elimination of the organisms from blood cultures may take somewhat longer, often requiring four twelve weeks. HIV infected children less than twelve years of age also develop disseminated MAC. Some age adjustment is necessary when clinicians interpret CD4 plus T lymphocyte counts in children less than 2 years of age. Diagnosis, therapy, and prophylaxis should follow recommendations similar to those for adolescents and adults. Lady Windermere syndrome is one term to describe infection in the lungs due to MAC. It is named after a character in Oscar Wilde's play Lady Windermere's Fan. In recent years, some have described the eponym as inappropriate, and some have noted that it would have been unlikely that Lady Windermere had the condition to which her name was assigned. The more commonly used term is non-tuberculous mycobacteria infection, or non-tuberculous mycobacterial infection. 
there is no evidence that a person's reluctance to spit has any causal role in NTM infection, the chief reason for the term having been applied to older women presenting with the condition. Lady Windermere syndrome is a type of mycobacterial lung infection. The original chest article proposing the existence and pathophysiology of the Lady Windermere syndrome suggested the character Lady Windermere in Oscar Wilde's Victorian era play Lady Windermere's fan is a good example of the fastidious behavior believed to cause the syndrome. The article states, Victorian women presumably believed ladies don't spit and consequently might have been predisposed to develop lung infection. Shortly after the Lady Windermere syndrome was proposed, a librarian wrote a letter to the editor of Chest challenging the use of Lady Windermere as the eponymous ancestor of the proposed syndrome. In the play, Lady Windermere is a vivacious young woman, married only two years, who never coughs or displays any other signs of illness. While her avoidance of shaking hands might be interpreted as fastidiousness, two alternative explanations may be just as probable. The scholars highlight the literary malapropism, but some in the medical community have adopted the term regardless, and peer-reviewed medical journals still sometimes mention the Lady Windermere syndrome although it is increasingly viewed as a limiting and sexist term for a serious bacterial infection.